My name is Megan Mitchell. When I'm not food styling, shopping, and prepping for various cooking shows, I love cooking for friends and creating new recipes. This is Secrets of a Food Stylist. Hi, I'm Megan Mitchell, and today we are making homemade pizza dough. And with that dough, we will make potato and rosemary flatbread. So delicious, super easy. We're starting with 3 fourths cup of warm water. You don't want it too hot because it'll kill the yeast, and you don't want it too cold because then the yeast won't grow. I'm using active dry yeast, two teaspoons of yeast. These are actually dormant bacteria, and to bring them back to life and then help your dough rise, we're going to give them a little sugar, just a teaspoon. I'm just going to stir it up. You don't want to agitate it too much, and then just leave it alone. Into my stand mixer, two cups of all-purpose flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, which is just like one big pinch, maybe a little pinch too. About two tablespoons of oil, and this, this just adds a little richness to the dough. And I'm gonna oil my bowl as well. After this kneads, I'll put it into this oiled bowl, and you wanna do that so the dough doesn't stick to the inside. Just gonna start it on low, kind of get everything incorporated before I pour in the yeast. Great, bump up the speed. The moisture of the water and the yeast and the oil is starting to absorb the flour. It looks like a mess right now. It, it does not look like it's going to come and form this smooth ball. But give it time. I promise it will. My dough is ready. It's been kneading for about 10 minutes. And that really helps develop the glutens. If it was sticking to my hands, I'd put a lot more flour into it. But this is perfect. I'm going to use some bench flour, which is just a fancy word for some side flour to put on my table. I'm gonna knead it by hand, just a little bit. You wanna knead it just until it feels elastic. You kinda want it to pull it, and it kinda pulls back. It has a little bit of a give to it. This looks perfect. Into my greased bowl, and you can sort of grease the top. You just don't want it to dry out, get big cracks or anything in it. And place this in a warm area covered for about three hours, and it'll double in size. While my pizza dough rests, I'm gonna start on my toppings for this flatbread. We're gonna begin with the caramelized onions. Just need enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan. And I love the sweetness these onions bring to this dish. I think the onions add a little, a little salt and salt in. I cut it in half, and now I'm gonna cut it into half moon slices. Relatively thin. I mean, it doesn't have to be too crazy. Time to work on those nice skills. Let this happen. I'm just gonna sprinkle this with a little bit of salt. It kind of helps them soften and caramelize. I'm not gonna take them fully caramelized. I don't want them this deep, dark color. I have my heat on medium, so this will take about 15 minutes. They're sizzling. Potatoes. Fingerling potatoes, too. Mandolin. People are very scared of this utensil, but it gives you an even, fast cut. I'm using fingerling potatoes. Keep your fingers away from the blade. See, look at how pretty they look. They're all even. They're very thin. Actually, this is kind of how you would make homemade potato chips. Thinly slice it, bake them, or fry them. I'm just gonna drizzle them with a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. It just adds more flavor to everything. Toss it up. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of the dish, Taleggio cheese. It's a cow's milk cheese, and it's very soft and super, super smelly, which is how I judge my cheeses. The smellier, the better. It's very, very creamy. I think it goes great with the rosemary and the onions and the potatoes. I obviously want to cut off this, because that is inedible. As soft as it is, you cannot grate it. So we're just going to roughly chop this. You're going to need about eight ounces. My onions are done. They're nicely golden brown and caramelized. I think my dough has risen as well. Oh! See how it's doubled in size? I just had that small dough ball and now it's puffed up. Just gonna flour my board just a little bit. I don't want it to stick. So gentle. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 450. And I'm flouring the top as well because I don't want it to stick to the rolling pin. I want it roughly the same size as my sheet pan. 
So it's gonna be a rectangle pizza. I really like the shape of this. This is a flatbread, this isn't just a pizza. It has a little bit different shape. It'll get really crunchy. I'm also gonna dust my cookie sheet with a little semolina flour. Just a light dusting. The trick to getting this pizza dough off the board is you start at one end and you kind of pick up the dough and roll it around the rolling pin, like a so. I just turned Italian, what the? Grab my sheet tray. Hopefully, this will fit on it. Come on, pizza dough. Blue! That's what I did. This looks great. Let's start our build. First, drizzle of olive oil. You know, more olive oil. A little salt. And right now, I'm just seasoning the crust pretty much because I hate when you taste a pizza or a flatbread and it has no flavor. I mean, the toppings do, but the crust itself is kind of bleh. Well, if you salt and pepper your crust, you know, you won't have that problem. Just half of the cheese is gonna go on right now, and it acts kind of like the glue, the binder, for all of the ingredients to stick to. And this is a great appetizer as well. You can probably serve four to six people or one very hungry person. Now the beautiful caramelized onions. I'm doing it, fingers of steel, because these are a little toasty. Evenly sprinkle it. Now the potatoes, the very thinly sliced potatoes. I kind of wanna shingle them on the pizza. You don't wanna pile them on top of each other. And now, you guessed it, more cheese. I wanna cover some of the potatoes with the cheese. Cause it'll get ooey and gooey and melty and oh my gosh. And my last final touch is rosemary. And instead of chopping it, I like people to see when they're eating whatever I happen to make, break them apart. And I like adding the rosemary because it's very earthy and woodsy, and I love how the rosemary just kind of balances everything. Everything's ready, I'm gonna pop it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Oh! I'm gonna gently slide it off. This looks amazing. So excited. Now since this is a, a rectangle pizza, I'm going to cut it into square pieces. Oh my gosh. See how the potatoes just crisped up and the cheese melted beautifully? I gotta try it first. I'm, a, I'm an edge, I'm a corner girl. This looks so good. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. The onions are sweet, the cheese is so creamy, the rosemary adds a little punch. Now to plate something like this, I'm just gonna shingle some of them around the edges and then place a couple in the middle. For this recipe and more, subscribe to Hungry.